What's up, everybody? We got a fun one today, and that's the boy and the heron from Studio Ghibli. I will be getting into some spoilers in this review, so if you want to go in fresh, save this video, and I hope to see you back in the Nerdverse once you have seen the movie. Everybody else, let's get into the review. So as always, I'll kick it off with the cons of the movie, which aren't very many, at least for me, with this one. The first thing that bugged me was the pacing of the movie. Even in the good parts, it stayed in scenes a bit too long, when it could have spent its 124 minute runtime more efficiently. Then the only other thing that I'm going to complain about, uh, it's the first act. Except for the opening scene actually, which was good, but was the only part of the movie, oddly enough, that felt rushed. Then as I said, uh, as I just said, the rest of the movie was rough pacing wise. That's it. That's all I've got to complain about with this movie. It was a really good experience. Now for the pros of the movie, first off, I want to give props to Studio Ghibli as the animation in this movie was just phenomenal. I talked a bit about that opening scene in the con section and that was easily my favorite scene of the movie. Mahito is running through the streets of Tokyo. I, I believe that's where he and his family live. I think it was Tokyo during World War II as his mother's hospital is on fire and burning down. It lacks some emotion, because as I said, it was kind of rushed, but it was visually stunning and a great way to open the movie. Then, there's the wacky stuff, especially the stuff that takes place in the world the living and the dead share. All the different birds in those wara waras, I think they were called, <laughs> which are like uh, little marshmallows, are absolutely hilarious, but also kind of disturbing, but in an oddly good way. Next up, I want to praise the second and third act, which takes place almost exclusively in that other world, and once they get past that first act, the film really finds its footing and doesn't really lose it despite the pacing issues. Finally, I really love the way Mahito worked with his mother, obviously a younger version of her, in the other world. It's revealed in the closing minutes that it was his mother, and it really just added a whole new layer to what you just watched unfold and it's just really cool. And so that'll do it for my review of Studio Ghibli's The Boy and the Heron. It was a really, really good movie despite its minor issues, and honestly, it might send me into a Studio Ghibli binge as it lands out at 8 out of 10 for me personally. Also, don't forget I'm going to have my Godzilla minus one review up tomorrow. I'm finally seeing it tonight, but as always, I want to know what you guys thought about this movie, so go ahead and let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and make sure you have a great day.